night. Hallelujah. Is that all right? Um, tonight, I want to speak a word. I want to speak a word. I won't keep you much longer. I want to speak a word. Um, tomorrow, we're going we to go harder and go home. Uh, the, 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 the theme is, is critically important that we understand it. Huh. There's nothing to, I'll go again. There's nothing too hard for God. So go hard or go home. You catch it? There's nothing too hard for God. Or you can flip it if you want to. Um, one of the things that came to mind, I got it from a gospel rap artist called Uncle Reese, who talks about going hard in the paint, talking basketball, going hard in the paint. And um, his point was to go hard hmm, for God is to forget about everything else and know what you're focused on. If you've ever done anything professional in your life, you would know the only how to make it is to stay focused. Don't let the things around distract you. I'm going hard for that because that's why I'm here. Hallelujah. So we're going hard or we're going home. Well, wherever your home is, <laughs> heaven or hell, um, choose you this day whom you will serve. Now, I, I'm serious. You know, that's, that's the bottom line. Because your home is where your heart is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you continue, if you like sinning and all the rest of it, then the devil is your focus. And you can go with him. It's cool. But that's not where my heart is. Ah, nah, nah, the amen dried up there. Is that because people don't know where they're going? Or, <laughs> or it was just too straight? Maybe I should be a bit more diplomatic. Say you paint a piano? There is a God. <laughs> hey, hey, don't touch it yet. Let's go to the book of Acts. Let's go to the book of Acts and let's do this and get ready to rumble. Book of Acts, let's go to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. My sermon tonight is J-E-S-U-S. J-E-S-U-S. Acts chapter 3. And uh, let's go to verse 6. When you found it, say amen. Okay, one person found it. Two people found it. Amen. Three, Acts chapter three and verse six. Let me read it off the screen so we're consistent. Uh, then Peter said, silver and gold, but what to have I give unto thee? In the name of, rise up and, and walk. Father, speak in Jesus' name. Amen. This, 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 this scripture I love. I love, I was preaching in Tobago, and I, 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 we, we didn't even get halfway through the scripture, and the church was already on fire. Uh, one lady just couldn't wait till we got to the end. When she got to Jesus, she started hallelujah in. Remember, we had a lady here called Sister Blake in the day? Yeah, yeah, that kind of hallelujah in, that kind of excitement. I, I just, you know, and, and, and it's interesting, I go preaching nowadays, I was in Beckenham just recently, and uh, met myself and mom, and... and <laughs> And Sister Blake was there, amen. And uh, she showed up with a little tambourine. Come on, say amen. And, and, and she was still praising God. Amen, amen, amen. So I just need about a few hundred of Sister Blake, and I'll be fine. Amen, amen. But, but this particular text is a Holy Ghost text. And you know it's Holy Ghost because it's Acts chapter 3. So this is after the Holy Ghost has fallen. You got me? Uh, this is after Jesus had died and the Holy Ghost, which was promised, had come. Now, the next chapter has to be an exciting chapter. If the Bible writers are true, then the next chapter must be the most exciting chapter in, in the Bible. Because chapter 2 says the Holy Ghost came down with great expectation, almost like this crusade. Come on, say amen. The people waited with bated breath for this promised Holy Ghost to show up. The good news is God keeps his promises. I'll go again because someone didn't catch it. God keeps his promises. I'll go again because someone really wanted to say amen but was scared about the person next to them. God really keeps his promises. It's evident to me that some of us don't know, but I know in my own life that God keeps his promises. Oh, come on, somebody. Smile at that at least. He keeps his promises. So the Bible says, hallelujah, 
that the, the Holy Ghost came down. And, and Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 says, and they received power. <sighs> I'm suggesting that what the world needs now is people with power. If you know anything about that word in this context, it means dunamis, which is where we get the word dynamite. Hallelujah. There's another word in Acts that is used for power, and it's, it's, it's the, the Greek means exorcia, which means authority. Well, with somebody was in the building. God has given us authority. God has given us dynamite power. Come on now. When we show up, we should change the temperature in the room. When we show up with the power of the Holy Ghost, people should be healed. When we show up, hallelujah, lives should be changed. Not because we're trying to change lives, but whenever God is around, hallelujah, lives become changed. Holy Ghost comes down, and don't forget Acts chapter 1 and 14 says with women. I'm pausing for effect. Here comes Acts chapter 3. You ready for it? Are you ready? Boy, you all look like you just... You know what I love about church folk? Actually, I don't like church folk, but let me tell you what I like. Church folk. They sit down like, like investigators. Instead of praising, they're trying to figure out where he's going, what he's saying. and now they, Just take it at face value. Can we just do that? Yeah, yeah. The Holy Ghost ain't going to lie to you. Amen. And some of you have got to investigate that statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just shall live by faith, not fate. In Acts chapter 2, it ends with these words that God would add to the church daily such as should be saved. Hallelujah. Now we jump into Acts chapter 3. I love Acts. You all like the book of Acts? Jump into Acts chapter 3. What I like about this is these uh, two guys. How many guys? Two guys, their name is Peter and John, is that all right? They go into the temple, yeah, and it's the hour of prayer. I told you I like praying, hallelujah. Um, like, <laughs> back in my day, it would be Fresh Prince and Jazzy Jeff. These were two guys I used to look at when I go home from school. I don't know if they still have the reruns on, but we used to watch them back in the day. And, 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 and they would always do something crazy together. Peter and John was exactly the same, but the good thing is they pray together. Young people, let me share something with you. If you've got friends in your life that are not praying, don't call them your friends. Acquaintances, they're nice people to hang with every now and then. But real friends know how to get a prayer through. You've got to hang with people that know God. Come on. Now. And I'm telling you, and if they don't know God, then you've got to lead them to God. You've got to take them in prayer. Hallelujah. And so these two together. And it's always nice to have a relationship with two people that love the Lord. And, I, and, and, and I'm not just talking about Peter and John. I'm talking about male and female. Amen. Yeah, yeah, it's always easier. Hallelujah. To go together. Now watch this move. It's very important that you watch. So they're going together. It's the hour of prayer. I like the word hour here. Amen. Not the five minutes of prayer, but it's the hour of prayer. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Good. And the reason why this is critical, because some of us have now uh, limited God to microwave prayers. And so we stick God in the microwave just before we leave the house, and ding, after 30 seconds, we're out the door, we're on the bus, we're on the train. Come on now, in the car, in the traffic, we got to work, and we wonder why the morning hasn't gone well. Mom, when she used to eat meat back in the days, amen, uh, she used to cook a turkey at Christmas. Hallelujah. And I know, I, know, I know there was something special about my mom's turkey because you can smell it down the road. Come on. Now. It was one of those turkeys that would look almost as big as a human. And, 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 and she would marinate, are you all with me? That turkey in the thing days. So the marinade would stick to, are you all here? To the turkey. Can you go taste it? Oh, no, you don't got that. Come, you all don't eat meat. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody say amen on that. <laughs> Must be finger licking good. <laughs> 
So watch this. So, they, so, so you put it in the oven and, 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 and so you leave it there. And it seemed like on Christmas Eve it will cook all night long. Come on now. Nowadays you can get a turkey and in five minutes it's ready to eat. But you put it in the oven and it will cook all night long and we will smell it throughout the house and down Leafway Road and round Cobbled Road. Come on now and down Askey Road. And Tenora is cooking a turkey. <laughs> but all night long that thing will cook and I'm suggesting that we need to trade in our prayer life. A microwave prayer life for turkey prayer life. Amen. Hallelujah. Let it affect the folk on your block. Let it affect the folk down your street. Let it affect the folk across the road. Hallelujah. Let it affect you all night long. Because some of the trials we have need conventional oven prayers. I'm not no quick microwave fix. They don't jump going up to the temple. It's our prayer. And they go in because they like to pray. Hallelujah. But as they go into the temple, there is a strange happening. The Bible says there is a man who is brought to the gate, and the gate is called beautiful. They lay him at the gate, and there he stays as the people pass him going in. Boy, I wish someone knew I was going with this. He stays at the gate, and the folk go, and they pray. And every day, they seem to do the same thing. But the sad reality is, he needs to be on the inside. But they go past him, and they go to pray, because the focus is on prayer. They're going hard at the wrong thing. Because how can you pray and leave a layman at the gate? Someone should have some dunamis power to make the layman walk again. Now watch this move. Hmm. They're walking up. The man is begging for money. One thing I can't stand when I go to countries is where as soon as you step out the airport, folk are begging you for money. That is the most irritating thing in the world. I went to see the pyramids in Egypt about six weeks ago. Oh no, about eight weeks ago. And when I got there, the taxi man wanted money. The man who put me on the horse, and I didn't know I was going on a horse to ride to the Sahara Desert, wanted money. The horse seemed like it wanted money. Because <laughs> the man was asking for money on behalf of his horse. Then we got to the pyramids, and the man that lets you in the gate wanted money. And I already paid the man for the tour on the pyramid. And I'm mad. But the reality is, I go because I wanted to see the pyramids. I see the pyramids and I wonder why I can't. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> and I looked at these three things, and I looked at this thing with no nose, and I'm saying, Bridget, what? <laughs> All of this money for that. But money. People think money will solve their problems. But there's certain things money can't buy. There's an old song that says money can't buy love. Money can buy a house, but it can't buy a home. Money can buy clothes, but it can't buy warmth. Money <laughs> can buy a book, but it can't buy common sense. There are certain things money can't buy. Money can buy weave, but it can't buy hair. Uh, money can buy makeup, but it can't buy good looks. Money can buy a church, but it can't buy a savior. There are certain things money can't buy. And I showed up here to let someone know that money is not success. As a matter of fact, the most successful people, if you want to class them as having money, are the ones that have the most struggles. But you walk through the neighborhood where people don't have a whole lot, and they smile a while and give your face a rest. Come on now. I was in the middle of Uganda just walking through, went to put some wells in and do all this stuff. And I'm walking through, and I'm looking at this guy playing football with no shoes. But the grin on their white teeth, come on now. White teeth unstained by sweets. And they're grinning. And I decided I'm going to try and play football with them. Lord have mercy. Brethren, they made me look. Anyway, let me not say what I was going to say. But they, I didn't look good. Amen. And I looked at these guys and they were so happy. And after we sat down and they were talking to me about their future plans, I said, what do you want me to pray for? He said, knowledge and wisdom. Nine years old. 
that success. I asked a young person at my school, what should I pray for? He said, pray I get baptized and you can give me 500 pounds for doing it. That's what he told me. Certain things money can buy. Let's go to verse 6. But here comes the reply. Because the reality is, hallelujah, here comes the reason for the season. Here comes the answer to everyone's financial problems. Amen. Ah, silver and gold I don't have. And I'm testifying here. Come on, say amen. Silver and gold I don't have. But such as I have, I give it to you. Watch this. In order to use the per personal pronoun I three times, you must have a relationship with the person you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So such as I have, I give unto you. Well, Peter, what you got? You ain't got money. You ain't got silver. You ain't got gold. What you got? What you got? You got Louis. You got Versace. You got Gucci. What you got? Well, Ray, what I got is someone that would change your life forever. Come on, now what I got is someone, if you just try him, hallelujah, he will make the difference in your life. He, he can break your addictions. He can turn your life around. He can fix your marriage, hallelujah. He can fix your situation. He can give you a job. He can help you pass your exams. He can give you all that you need and even what you want. Try him. And so, such as I have, I give unto you. What I love about this text, in the name of Jesus. Now, I like this because, uh, you know, I, I, I was teaching in Mount View Academy when I was pastoring in, in San Jose, California. And I looked at the register when I first got there, and on the register, it said Jesus about 10 times. Because if you know anything about California, you know that a lot of Hispanics live there. And the name Jesus is a regular name. So I'm like, these people are blaspheming, man, calling their children Jesus. I mean, that's, I, I just couldn't get my head around it. You know, being from down here, I just couldn't get my head around it. So I'm looking at this thing, and I'm like, Jesus this, Jesus this. Then they said, Jesus. I said, no, that's Jesus. There ain't no hey in that, and phonetically, that don't match. Of course, you know, I didn't go to school for long. Amen. So I don't, okay. Some of y'all don't laugh. I went to school a bit longer than y'all. Amen. Now watch this. this <laughs> But when you look at the text, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, just in case you come up with 10 Jesuses, <laughs> the text has to make it plain. Come on, say amen. Oh, yeah. Ray Patrick from Leafer Road in Shepherd's Bush. Come on, say amen. Got to make it plain. We don't want no mistakes. This is the real Jesus. He's from Nazareth. Come on, say amen. He ain't looking like a big man. He ain't from a big place. But there's something about his name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like a fragrance after the rain. Kings and kingdoms may all pass away, but there's something about that name. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. He will joy and comfort give you. Take his name wherever you go. Precious name, oh, how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Is someone here? And so, I just finished preaching and I get a phone call. Pastor, you know what it's like after you finish preaching on Sabbath? you just beaten. You've given everything you can. And it's only by the grace of God you can get home. And, and I was sitting in my study and... and and the phone rang. I got a rule. There are two things I don't do on Sabbath. Come on, say amen. I don't answer the phone. Amen. And I don't have meetings. Got six days for that. Preacher must keep the Sabbath too. That was a public service announcement. On behalf of the picket. <laughs> anyway, watch this, watch this. The phone rings. I answer the phone. There's a lady on the, under the phone, and she's saying, Pastor Ray, is that you? Yes, it's me. Um, you don't know me, but my brother in California, not far from where your church is, is about to commit suicide. I need you to go to him. She said, 
I don't know what state he's in, but he needs some help. I dropped the phone, and it didn't matter how I felt. I went to where she told me he was. Got in my car, and I drove there. And as I'm driving, I'm looking at big houses, mansions. And if you know anything about San Jose, California, at that particular time, you know it was the height of the Silicon Valley. It's probably the richest place in the world to live. Big old mansions. And I'm thinking, why would somebody want to commit suicide? I'm talking about the name of Jesus. And so I get to the house, and I see these big old gates, and I'm like, boy, my car was too old to go inside, so I parked outside. You know, every now and then you get intimidated. You know what I mean? But then I ain't going to go just in case oil leaks and on your driveway. <laughs> anyway. So I open the door and I, the gate and I walk in. I ring the doorbell. A little Filipino lady comes out. She said, you must be Pastor Ray. And I'm like, yeah, you expecting me? She said, yes, the sister called, said you were coming. I said, great. I said, where is your husband? He's upstairs. Pastor, I think he's going to kill himself. So I looked at her, and she looked very scared. I said to her, what I need you to do for me is to say the name Jesus at the top of your voice until I come back downstairs. Amen. Now, I know you're investigating a testimony, but still, every now and then, saying amen to know that I'm your follower. You win together. Amen? So, She's saying the name Jesus. I didn't ask her if she believed in Jesus. Because that's not my business. My business, hallelujah, is to know that by faith, things happen at the name of Jesus. Are you hearing you know what I'm saying? And so um, I make my way up the stairs. I don't know what I'm going to meet. Never seen the man before. When I walk into the bedroom, the man is sitting there with a gun to his head. Now, at this particular time, amen, all theological classes and pastoral ministry classes have gone out the window because I'm from England and I don't know what a gun really looks like. Amen. And I'm seeing a man with a gun to his head and I figured he's about to blow his brains out. I mean, that's just deduction. Amen. I just figured. I go on the bed and I sit beside him. Probably not the wisest thing to do, but I figured he needed touch. Mm. I hope that helped a few people in the building. So I sat beside him. I put my arm around him, and he shrugged it off. He said, who are you? Of course, the other problem is, is that I look like me, and he looked like him. You got me? Good, good. That's what we got to say. So, so I'm sitting on the bed. I said, I'm Pastor Ray. Your sister called me to come and see how you were doing. Said you're having a hard time. He said, well, it's over. And you know, my first response to everything is hallelujah. So he thinks I'm hallelujah because he's going to kill himself. I'm hallelujah because he just predicted what's about to happen. Boy, I wish I could preach this. I feel, I feel, I feel like, I feel like you're with me right here. And so it's over. Hallelujah. And so we're talking. He's still got the gun to his head. Holy Spirit told me to pray. I can hear the lady downstairs saying, Jesus Jesus, and you know, she's so desperate that she got to say it loud. Come on now, she got to keep going because she wants the power. She wants the healing. She wants the deliverance. Are you all here? The deliverance. She wants things to change. Now watch this move. Hallelujah. She's saying, Jesus, and I'm praying in Jesus' name. Brethren, I'm praying that God will do this. And now, I'm not crazy. I believe when the Bible says, watch and pray. Amen. It's a literal watch and pray. Look at the text. Yeah, that, that don't mean no symbolic watch with your heart like they used to tell me back in the day. Watch with your heart. No, watch with your eyes. The man got a gun in his hand. Come on, say amen. You crazy? I got a wife, I got children, I got everything. You mad? Man got a gun? Anyway, you know saying that. So I'm watching the man. Come on, say amen. And, that, and that what's interesting is his eyes is closed as I'm praying. Brethren, you know, that gives you more impetus to pray. And I'm praying, 
and I'm seeing a tear start rolling down his face. Come on now. And I'm saying, come on, Holy Ghost. Boy. And I'm praying, and I'm praying. Now, the only hope I got to be, come out of that room alive is for the Holy Ghost to move the gun from his head and not point it towards me. Come on, say amen. And so I'm praying, man, and then he, he throws the gun on the bed, and he starts to cry. Hallelujah. Well, very quickly, in one move, I take the gun. Come on, say amen. Take it. Amen. I know some of y'all will wait for God to do another miracle. No, God. <laughs> what is enough? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Put it far from him. Hallelujah. You got to get around me to get to it, and he ain't getting it. And he said, he told me the story as to why he was committing suicide. Big time attorney, lost a big case. People were suing him, didn't have no money. He was about to crash. I reassured him. Same Jesus that you can hear coming up the stairs from your missus. And the same Jesus that I pray to can sort your life out. I'm talking about the name of Jesus. Somebody here, brethren mine, let me tell you. Are you ready for this? I don't know if you all got any praise in you, man. I know it's Friday and you're tired. It's been a hard week. But if you got some praise in you, get ready to shout because it gets good. Hallelujah. So what happens next is, I say to him, what do you want to do? He said, I don't know. I said, let's go eat some food. What do you want to eat? He said he likes Big Macs. Now, I know some of y'all would have taught him the health message right there. <laughs> he would have seen it as a witnessing opportunity. <laughs> the Bible don't talk against Big Mac. Yeah, some of you are going to struggle with that. But put that in your pipe and smoke it. I'm not saying it's right at this time in us history to eat, but in that time, Bedrin, he had a Big Mac, and I had a Big Mac. And I had a Big Mac. Come on, say amen. But brethren, the man could have been dead. Hallelujah. But he's alive again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go down there, sat down, had a Big Mac with the man and his wife, and we had a good laugh and talk. I cracked as many jokes as I could. Amen. And you know I could do a few. Amen. And we talked about stuff, and he asked me about England, and he asked me all kinds of stuff, and then we developed a friendship. Come on, say amen. I said, man, whenever you're ready, Whenever you're ready, just come to my church. I'd love to see you there. Meet the people, fellowship with them. But don't feel pressured whenever you're ready. Well, the good news is about three or four weeks after that, I was preaching. And I'm looking through the, black, the back door as I stood up in the pulpit, and I could see him and his wife coming in the door of the church. They came and they sat at the back. Amen. You know, you know God has a sense of humor. Because once I saw them, I started pumping up the volume. Come on, say, man, preaching hard. Hey. Yeah. You know? <laughs> no, this is beautiful. It's so beautiful. And so I made the appeal. Took his wife by the hand. And they walked down the aisle of the church. Gave their heart to Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. God moved them from suicide to salvation. Now you can't get that man out of the church because he's going hard, because he wants to go home. Amen. Amen. There's power in the name of Jesus. I dare you to try it. And so I, I'm, I'm an NBA fan. Amen. Anyone that don't know NBAs, then ask someone under 40. They'll tell you, Amen. <laughs> So uh, back in my day when I was in America, Allen Iverson was my player. He stood about six foot tall, one of the shortest guys in the NBA at the time, but he could dunk. He could really get up high. He played for the 76ers in Philadelphia. And I, I was sitting at the game. I was sitting at the game because every Saturday night I would take the youth to basketball. <clears throat> we paid for a VIP box from the church's budget. Because membership should have its privileges. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> so we end the thing. And of course, Alan Iverson has gotten the ball. And he's moving the ball towards the basket. I'm talking about the name of Jesus. Is that all right? 
moving towards the basket. It's looking good. Hallelujah. He's moving as fast as he can. He's galloping along, and everyone is on their feet, and they're cheering, and they're calling out every letter of his name. And he's saying, give me an L, an L, give me an L, an L, give me an L. And they're shouting out his name. He's moving towards, and Shaquille O'Neal is under the basket. You know, Shaq is seven foot tall, and he's proper Goliath. Come on, say amen. And little Alan went up over him. Come on now. In midair. And dunked on Shaquille O'Neal. Well, the place went crazy. When they asked him afterwards, how on earth did you manage that? He said, I took adrenaline from the crowd. When they started calling my name, it gave me, you all ain't with me, I'm going to go home. Started calling my name, it gave me impetus. Come on now, to keep on going. I'm not saying God needs any impetus because he's going to bless us anyway. But every now and then, he needs our praise. That is why he created us. So I wonder if we could try a little exercise in the church before we go home tonight. You think we can help me with that? Okay, good. Are you all ready? So give me a J. J. Ah, Come on, guys. That wouldn't take nobody past Shaquille O'Neal. Give me a J. J. Yeah, give me an E. E. Give me an S. S. Give me a U. U. Give me an S. S. What does it spell? What does it spell? What does it spell? Now, what I want you to do is think about what you need Jesus to do in your life. And we're going to spell it again. Is that all right? And on the third Jesus, after we've spelt it, I want you to begin to praise God with other things, amen, other than J-E-S-U-S. You ready? So we're watching it now. We're watching it now. It's looking like there's a big obstacle in our way, and the obstacle has got to go. So we're going to call upon who? So give me a J. Give me an E. Give me an S. Give me a U. U. Give me an S. What does it spell? What does it spell? What does it spell? The Bible says demons tremble at the power of his name. We ought to call his name more often. Jesus of Nazareth. Now watch this as we end the text. The lame man who all this is about. Hallelujah. Is looking at Peter like he done lost his mind. But Peter decides that he's not just going to call upon the name Jesus, but he's going to help the lame man get up. I wish somebody was in the building. Some of us have become so selfish in our Christianity that we are saved and we go and we don't help nobody else. Come on now. We got people in our own house. Hello. And some of us, we sit down and we say, oh, man, I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to make it. I'm going to, brethren, you ain't going nowhere past the ceiling if you ain't helping somebody else make it to the kingdom. That is our mandate. Come on, say amen. And so Peter grabs the man by the hand, hallelujah, and the man gets up. Never walked before, but now he's standing. Come on, say amen. When people come to Jesus based upon love for Jesus, not love for a church or love for anything, but love for Jesus. When they come to Jesus, hallelujah, and they try him, they stand taller than they've ever stood before. Brethren, the man stands up. Never before has he stood on his legs, but he stands up tall. I like the golden chords used to sing, the toe bone is connected to the foot bone. And the foot bone got connected, come on now, to the heel bone. And the heel bone got connected to the ankle bone. And the ankle bone got connected to the leg bone. And the leg bone got connected to the knee bone. And the knee bone got connected to the thigh bone. And the thigh bone got connected to the waist bone. And the, I don't know the rest of the bones, but, you, but all I know is, hallelujah, the man who never walked before at the name of Jesus stands up. And I love what he does next. Because in most churches in this city here, we put out for the next move. But I came by here to tell you, you don't know what someone's been through. So don't criticize the way they praise. I'll go again, because some of us have it down to a script where we write the script and you got to praise God this way. And you got to say it that way. The pen of inspiration says, praise when given from the heart does not deter the preacher. Hallelujah. Brethren, if you're praising God from the heart, it won't upset the service. Come on, say amen. The man uh, who was lame from his mother's womb hmm, was on the outside, but now he comes in the inside. Hallelujah. And as he makes his way in the inside, he's moving so quickly because he wants to praise God because of what has happened to him. 
And I don't know, I get worried when people ah, have to be begged to give a testimony about what God has done. So he makes his way into the church and he doesn't sit down looking like some of us. Come on, say amen. He doesn't look sad and he doesn't look miserable and he doesn't wait for the choir to sing. He doesn't wait for the preacher to ask spoke to say amen. Come on now. Then I, and it, all I know is, hallelujah, I was lame but now I'm walking. I was on the outside begging but now I'm on the inside. Hallelujah. I was bad and looking down and life was a mess but here comes Jesus. And my man gets in there and he starts leaping and jumping around. Now, I know some of you will call the deacons. Come on now, you call everybody. Get the man out of the building. He done lost his mind. We don't do that here. So I pray to God and I ask God for 3,000 pounds or dollars to pay to get back in school. I'm going to Bermuda to preach an evangelistic meeting. And I'm asking God for the money. And, and God, hallelujah, has a strange way sometimes of giving you what you ask for. I'm expecting God just to give me the money because that's what the Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. If that's the case, we'll all be rich. There'll be no lotto. Come on, say amen. Tell the truth and shame the devil. That's it. So now, I'm finished preaching at the end of my time in Bermuda. And I'm coming now to get back on the plane. When I'm coming across to get back on the plane, hallelujah. I don't have the money that I need to get back in school, and I'm heading back to school. So me and God are having a conversation as I'm walking across the tarmac to get on the, the plane. Then God, look, you know I need the cash. I'm literally about to fly out and fly back into school. I need the money. What's happening? Just then, I see a lady coming caught in my eye, and she's waving a white envelope. I figured it wasn't a war, so she wasn't surrendering. Come on, say amen. So they, and she's saying, Pastor Ray, Pastor Ray. And you know, if you know Bermuda Airport, you know you, it's one of those where you walk up onto the plane from the thing. So she's coming, and she's broken through the barriers, so she must be someone important. And so she came, and I said, stop. I said, yes, sis, how you doing? She said, you don't know me. She said her name, da 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 She said, but the Lord told me last night in a dream that you needed this. Now, 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 at this point, hallelujah, I'm already in praise mode. I know some of y'all would have to open it and count it in order to give, are y'all here to give God some praise? But because I asked God, whatever God gave me in that envelope, whether it be all or part, it's more than I had. Some of y'all, even if you're going to your bank account on Monday morning and it's a penny more, you ought to praise God for the penny. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So watch this. And so now I get the envelope. I give her a hug, give her a big kiss. Come on, say amen. She probably said, what kind of preacher is this? But, but I just believed that in the envelope was the answer to prayer. Put the envelope in my inside pocket. Hallelujah. Thanked her. Made my way on. Now, I get on the thing, and the lady had a joke with me, uh, the air hostess, and she was the one that was taking people onto the plane. And she, kept, she, she said, I look like Martin Lawrence. So she said, Big Mama House. She kept calling me Big Mama House. And uh, whatever. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, why did it? Why did it? So when it, anyway, she went on. It's a US air flight. And she said, you know, she said, the flight is full. So Big Mama House, I'm going to put you in first class. Amen. She said, yeah, it is, it's, we over, oversold the tickets. That I, I said, praise the Lord. He said, I'm going to ride up on the high places. Come on, say amen. And so I go in first class like I paid for it. You know, you got to do that, right? You, you, when, when the Lord blesses you, don't act like you shouldn't have the blessing. Oh, yeah, see, 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 I'm done. I'm done, with, I'm done with all of y'all. Don't act like you shouldn't have the blessing. If you prayed, you should have the blessing. Just as much as the man that paid two grand for his seed. Come on, say amen. And I walked in there, fold up my jacket. Y'all know I ain't never folded no jacket before. Fold up my jacket, nice and neat. Come on, say amen. Fold it up nice. The, the, the rich people do, amen. I put it up on the thing there, amen. Kicked off my shoes, reclined that thing all the way back. Do you want wine? No, just orange juice with a little ice. Amen. Drank my little tea, and I sat there, and then all of a sudden, there's a lady that comes and sits beside me. 
And I'm looking at a lady, she must be someone famous because she, you know what I mean, she got bling bling and she in first class. So I'm sitting there and she said, she said, how are you doing? So, so we got talking and everything. Hey, but in my mind is the cash. <laughs> I want to know what God has done. Are you here? You all ain't saying nothing, man. See, I'm the only one that thinks like that, right? Yeah, I'm the only, no, yeah, 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 right. So man, <laughs> so now, you know, it's a night flight, so the lights go down. Come on, say it, man. So now I got the envelope out, and I'm cracked the end of it, and I'm counting the dollars. Come on, say it, man. But when I get the 3,000, and I'm still counting. God will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. Amen. I had everything after 3,000 was once. Come on, say amen. So I'm thinking about trainers. I'm thinking about car. Come on, say amen. I'm thinking about everything else I, I wanted, but I didn't ask for. Come on, say amen. I'm begging you I get the five grand and the money stops. Hallelujah. When you get that kind of blessing, you can't sit down like a lump on a log. You can't sit down looking miserable. Brethren, I don't care if nobody else praises God in this building, but I've got enough to praise God for. I'm like the lame man, couldn't walk without Jesus, couldn't talk without Jesus. My life was miserable without Jesus, heading straight to hell. But one day, Jesus found me. I didn't find him because salvation is about God finding you, not about you finding God. Boy. All of a sudden, I wasn't at the gate called beautiful. My life became beautiful. Christ took me, and he made something beautiful out of my life. I gave him my all. I said, God, I'll never let you down. And he's the one that made something beautiful out of my life. Heads about, eyes are closed. I'm done. Father, this is the beginning of our journey together. And you said if Christ be lifted up, he will draw all men. So, Lord, we start tonight with Jesus. But, Lord, I want to pray for some lame person tonight. Somebody in this building that came here with a disease, with an issue from their mother's womb. Maybe it's a psychological issue. Maybe it's a physical issue. Something hereditary that was passed down something spiritually demonic that was passed down. Maybe there's something in their life right now as they sit here and they want it to go. They need it to go. They need things to change. And I don't know who you are, but the Lord has sent me tonight just for you to pray the name of Jesus into your life so that you now can have a testimony about what God can do and has done. I'm talking to you. I'm going to invite you, if you would like whatever it is you have from your mother's womb to change. And you'd like me to pray in the name of Jesus over your life to make a move out of your seat right now. You come down here, let's pray together. Because I believe God is still in the business of healing lame people in the name of Jesus. So come quickly. Don't wait for anyone around you to move. You'll be the first to move. If your plight is that desperate, come on down here. If you want to see God move, come on down here. If you want to see things change, come on down here. I dare you. I dare you to go against how you feel and against what people are saying and against church and against everybody else and make your way down the front of this church. I don't care if you're a member. I don't care if you're a visitor. It's time to move. Don't sit there if you know you need prayer. Don't look around at folk. You know your life needs it. You came in here tonight wishing things were different. Well, guess what? I believe God can make it different tonight. I believe God can move from being called beautiful to being beautiful. So come on down here. Move from your seat. Don't come, don't come with no expectations now. Just come as you are, believing what the preacher said tonight. And I guarantee you that things will begin to change in your life. Because God rewards the faith of the people when they pray. Hallelujah. So make that move. Give me some music. I feel naked up here. Make that move. Come closer, please. You're a long way away. Come closer. Come on. Good. Good. About to pray. Against all odds, your blessing is right here. Not because the preacher said it, because the Bible said it. 
Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. I seek and knock. Father, tonight we've heard a word. And the word is, it's not about silver and gold. But it's about Jesus. The word is, Jesus is still the answer for the world today. Above him, there is no other. Jesus must be the way. We've heard about the dunamis power and the power of exosia. Now give us the authority in our lives right now to speak against the evil and to speak against the things that hold us down and hold us back. In the name of Jesus, the person, Lord, you delivered from suicide was poor. Do it for this congregation right now that's standing in front of me in Jesus' name. Move somebody from suicide to salvation. Move them, Lord, in such a way that they'll have a testimony. Let us never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us say the name with power over our problems, over our sins, over our situations. Heavenly Father, that man, woman, boy, or girl that's standing here in desperate straits, touch them, Lord, and let them know that the same God that healed the lame man can break every chain in their life in Jesus' name. Come on, Holy Spirit. Come on, Heavenly Dove. Stay right here with us and fill us with your love. Let us feel your power and your presence and let us speak to our problems not under defeat but to let them know that our God is bigger than every problem we face so tonight Lord we leave here with reassurance by faith that you've already done what we've asked you to do and we'll take the name of Jesus with us because we know Lord without Christ we are nothing but with him we have everything bless those who have come to the front tonight and if there be someone here that has not given their heart to Jesus. Someone here who hasn't been baptized, someone here who hasn't said, you know what, I need to go all the way with Jesus Christ. And you want to say, Pastor, pray for me. Raise your hand where you stand or where you sit. I'd love to lift you in prayer. God bless you. Somebody else. You're raising a hand. Pray for me. I want to, I want to be all, go all the way with Christ. I, I want to be more like him. Father, bless the hand that was raised and the hearts that were raised. Write them in the Lamb's book of life now, never to be erased again. And then, Lord, give us the jubilant shout like the lame man. We'll run around telling people about what God has done for us. Not prompted by any preacher or by any denomination, but prompted because we love God. And we know that he's the one that has made the change. We love you, Lord. And we can't wait to see you. Bring us back tomorrow morning. And bring us back tomorrow afternoon to hear another word from you. As we continue on this journey, go hard or go home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you.